guys today we are doing some pigtails with some callaloo bush and some dumplings so what we in the Caribbean here call baji with pigtail and dumpling cooked in some coconut milk so first step is getting the pigtails boiled because they have a lot of salt in them so we need to get rid of the salt so this is the second time I'm boiling the pigtails and I'm going to boil it again so by the time I'm ready to put it into the callaloo bush to finish cook it won't be that tough right and I'm guessing some of you all don't know what is callaloo bush okay so this is the bush the leaf of um, I think they call it the taro leaf so we in the Caribbean here we know a lot about this our callaloo our badges you know and this is the stem also we use the stem also in our callaloos you know get it much more rich flavorful so what I have here is the, the leaves that I separated from the stems and as you can see some of them is curled up see that so you actually have to unravel them right sometimes when you unravel them you find a surprise such as a spider so that's why I separated it and I currently have it in the sink I'm going to give it a wash and then I'm going to give it a, just a rough chop because um, it itches my hands when I'm using it also too um, I'm going to add some oil to my hand to help to avoid you notice a little brownish spot on my finger that is to avoid those spots actually gets the whole hand all the fingers brown to that color that was just my mistake but see what um so these leaves i'm gonna wash them one at a time and put them here right let them finish drain whatever water they have in them and then i'm going to move on to my stems which i'm going to peel but i'm going to show you what i'm going to be doing with them so in the meantime i'm going to wash my leaves right i'll be back after i finish washing them okay now there we have it our clean leaves don't worry they're looking like they're dry but um these leaves actually let water roll off of them see that see water 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 see try right now we have the stems so I'm going to clean the stems all right I'm going to clean the stem by actually making a little incision and then we strip. See? Strip them off and then we break them up. And there you have it. So this is the finished product. Sorry about the water we search. So you see the difference from that to that. Alright, so I'm going to finish cleaning that. And I'll be back when I'm done cleaning it. So there it is. That's the stems. Just finish cleaning them. Alright. And then we have our leaves and our stems. So now it's time for us to start cooking. So I have an onion. I have six cloves of garlic. Although I would have used more, but um, not today. I have two pimentos and I have a bag of pumpkin that was peeled, chopped, 
and put into a Ziploc bag and frozen. And also I'm adding a piece of ginger. I may not use all of this. I may use about half of the ginger. I like a lot of ginger too, so I might use all. I think I'll be using all of this ginger because I love ginger a lot. And my kids soup. Remember, this is just simple cooking. This is cooking just the way you want to cook. Not how everybody else think you should cook. This is how you want to cook. However, you think when you cook your food, you want it to taste. That is what this is about. This is not about coming here and fancy, fancy seasonings and fancy this and fancy that. I'm just using simple seasonings, some pimento, some onions, some garlic, ginger, and I have um, ground um, seasoning. Also, I have some ground um, charbeni. So I'm also using that in it. Right? It doesn't matter. You use what you want. You're not sorry having a show for anybody. This is what your preference is. You cook whatever you feel you want to cook. If you want to cook with just onions and garlic alone, that's your preference. You want to cook with garlic alone, that's your preference. Onion alone, that's your preference. No seasoning, that's your preference. It's all about what you want, not what anybody else thinks you should do. Right, so that's my grated ginger. See there? Ginger. Ginger! Alright, so this is the pigtails. Just letting some water run through them. Because they were very hot. Just took them off. Um, I think I should put them back to boil again. You know? Yeah, I think I should put them back to boil. They are soft enough. They turned already. You know? Tender. I'm sorry if they still have salt. So I think I'm going to put them back to boil one more time. Not for long. Probably five minutes. And then I'll chop them up. And again, we'll start the cooking process. So I'm just adding my water to my pot to put my dumplings to boil. And I'm going to go and start kneading the flour for the dumplings. So while the water is boiling, it's getting hot. I'll be needing my flour for my dumplings. So it's just to put them into the pot when I'm finished. Right, water is up boiling and it's time to knead the flour. Right, so I'm going to use my flour. This is my flour here. This is a five pound package and I'm using three quarter pack of this flour because I have a very big family and it mainly consists of boys so you know how it goes so i'm using three quarter of this flour i'm not using any salt i'm just kneading it with water no salt i don't like putting salt into my flour for dumplings so here we are this is three quarter of the pack of flour and i'm just running my fingers through it you know take out any lumps that there is in it and I'm about to go and get my water so I can need my flour. Right. As usual, put a well. A little at a time because you want to need the flour a little stiff so we add the water a little at a time all right and this is how we do it we pull some of the flour from on the sides mix it to work on to the way we want our dumplings to be it's up to you but my family we like our dumplings a little stiff all right so and this is what I do when I get to, to the consistency that I want I remove this flour from here and I put it into something else I can rest on a plate so you see this is what we have here 
So you just keep repeating the process. Well, this is how I do my own. But other people have their own way. But this is how I do mine. Continue repeating the process. Little water. Knead until you reach the texture that you want your dumplings to be. And I remove them and put them into a plate. And after I'm finished removing, it, um, removing from the bowl, I'll place it back into the bowl and give it a proper knead. And then throw it out on my, on my um, countertop and finish knead it out. Alright, so you see my bowl empty, practically clean, kinda clean. Um, now I'm going to turn the flour back over into this bowl. Now we took out and put in the plate. And from there, I'm going to knead the flour until it gets smooth. Alright? And all of this happening. In the meantime, the water is boiling. No? Get everything done on a timely order. Remember, I did it in parts, right? So, I'm just trying to get all of the parts together. And then, I will turn it over onto the counter. A clean counter surface. And then, I will give it the final um, kneading. Right, so my clean counter surface. See how clean it is? I'm going to just get some dry flour. You don't want the... Um, dumpling flour to stick to the surface of your counter so now I'm going to turn the flour over from the bowl and finish knead it on the counter all right so this is the flour the finished flour I'm going to leave it right here on the counter and I'm going to start cutting it up right into the desired size of my dumplings when I'm ready so I'm going to just throw a cloth over it cover it and then I'll start cutting up when the water is finished boiling. In the meantime, let's head on to getting our pigtails cut up. Alright, so this is our pigtails. I'm going to remove them from the fire. And I'm going to wash them. Because yes, they boil, but I'm going to give them a wash. And I'm going to start cutting them up. I could have cut them up before I boil them, but not the lazy feeling sometimes, right? But it doesn't matter. It still have to cut up anyhow you take it. Whether it cook or it didn't cook, it's your method. You do your thing how you want. No one is to tell you how to cook in your home. Right. Our pigtails are finished cooking. So I'm just going to let some water run over them. You see what I did, right? I put... Um, this thing here, this strainer colander to catch the pigtails and let the water run out of them. Alright, so when it's cool, I'm going to wash them properly and I'm going to chop them up into my desired size, what suits me best. Alright, um, these pigtails you have a joint in. See any joint in there? So I'm actually going to try to run a knife through the joints and cut the pigtail into that size. So, you know, it depends. Because this one, I don't know what's the problem with this one. But this is me cutting up my pigtail to my desired size. You could cut it up bigger, cut it up smaller, it doesn't matter, it's up to you. All right, my pigtails are chopped up. I have um, shot berry, black pepper, all purpose, some thyme, you can hardly see the dry thyme, and um, some ground seasoning, grind seasoning that I did home. I did this home also. So I'm going to season this up by stirring it up, right? And then, yes, you might think it's a lot of seasoning, but whatever, 
This is how I like to cook. This is how I was taught how to cook. By watching other people cook and adding my own touch to my food. And I have created my own special take on a lot of the Caribbean foods that we here in Trinidad enjoy. Right? So um, this is my pickle ready to go so now I'm going to start prepping for my kalubush with pigtails and dumpling so here we go right. I like my um, my onion a little brown my garlic a little brown so I throw in so my garlic pimento into my pot and I'm letting it brown a little bit. I'm also I put um things out along with it. I'm going to let it brown a little bit because that's where I think the best flavor comes from when you let the onion and the garlic brown a little bit. And from there I'm going to throw in my pigtails. Right, I think that's good enough for me. I'm going to throw in my pigtails. Mmm, that looks so good. The way I cook my pigtail, you can eat the pigtail right out of the pot. I can even pick it up now and start eating. And it's actually cooked. But I love my pigtails very soft. And I think the softer you cook, your pigtail is the more flavor you drink from your food. So, that is my pickles and my seasoning. Um, put there to fry it on a little bit. And then I'm going to throw in my leaf. So I'm throwing in my leaf a little bit at a time because um, you want them to start wilting down so you can actually put all of the leaves into the pot. So you see, I've chopped my leaves up. I haven't chopped them up very small because I'm going to actually throw coconut milk into this so it will be cooking a little while longer right so you see throw it in there it started working down so i'm going to throw in another batch and do the same process by stirring well down and until i've thrown all and then i throw in my stems all right i've thrown in another portion of my leaves again I'm going to let it wilt down and then I'm going to add I have two more portions to add I'm not adding it plenty because as I said it's just going to be messy because when it's time to turn it it's going to be very hard to turn all right so little at a time and you take your time and you turn it up and you let it wilt and you can add a little more again and the same process Right. Well, then actually, like slims down the leaves. <laughs> so I've just thrown in the last bit of the leaves, and what I'm going to do next is throw in the stems. And when I'm finished throwing in the stems, I turn it up, and I'm going to add my coconut milk powder. Today I'm using coconut milk powder because coconuts are very hard to come by. I have a tall coconut tree in my yard and hmm, he sub he have problems. I think he sub making proper coconuts. I don't know. But um anyhow, I'm going to use coconut milk powder. I'm gonna show you the brand I'm using. And that's totally up to you again. You choose whichever brand suits you best. Right, so this is the coconut milk powder that I actually have to use today. Usually I use um the Maggie, but this works just fine. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to add some water into my bowl. I'm going to mix this and throw it into my bush. So I just add a cup of water to my bowl. And I've mixed the whole contents of the pack of milk powder. And now I'm going to throw it into my pots. Bye bye, milk powder. Right. I'm not putting too much water because this is something that I would like to have try. 
you know, that's a little and you load the stove so it will cook. Take its time and cook. And then check back. So I'm gonna cover it and let it cook. Right, so my water is boiling for my dumpling. You see that there? I throw a little oil into the water. That is to help the dumpling from sticking. I don't like my dumpling to be stuck, stuck together. Right, so I'm going to start making my dumplings, putting them into the pot. Again, you can make your dumpling to suit you. So what I just simply do, I cut off a piece of the flour and roll it into a log and then use my rolling pin and I roll it out and I chop them in two. So it doesn't matter how you make your dumplings. It's all up to you. This is something that is called your preference, not mine. I can cook my dumplings wrong, fold, wrap, anyhow. It's up to me. I can do them anyhow I want. But this is how I choose to make my dumplings. So it doesn't, it don't have a, a preference tag on how you should cook to suit you. You're cooking to please you and your family. So I'm cooking to please me and my family. And this is the way we like our dumplings. Right? And into the pot. Right? Throw them into the pot. And you start to give them a little stir because they sink to the bottom of the pot. And you don't want them to remain there because wherever they sink, they are actually going to get stuck to the bottom of the pot and then that would be it. You'll have to be digging dumpling out of your pot. So you just give it a little nudge, you know, away from where you rest them so they won't stick and eventually they will just bubble up for themselves, okay? So I'm going to finish put my dumplings into the pot and I'll show you my um, final, how my dumplings look after I'm finished draining them. Sorry about that. Mm, if you smell how oh, this house is smelling, it's smelling so good. Right, so last but not least, I did not forget my pumpkin. But remember, it's frozen pumpkin, so I don't want to put my pumpkin in too soon, you know, for them to like disappear in the pot. So we are almost there, so I'm going to put in the pumpkin now. Alright, so this is my pumpkin. Yes, it's a lot of pumpkin, but I love pumpkin. Alright, um, you can also put them in frozen, that's okay. Oh, look how pretty. See how pretty it's looking? Wow. It's so pretty. Wow. You could even add carrots to this. You could add okra to it. You can do it however you want. Right? You can do it however you want. You don't want to put the coconut milk. You don't want to put the pigtails if you're not a meat eater. You don't want to put the pigtails. You could use the same method. But with all the pigtails, and you cook it the same way. Coconut milk. If you're not a fan of coconut milk, you could use it with all the coconut milk. Um, it have ways of doing it and letting it just dry completely. But how I am doing it today, I actually wanted to have some of this beautiful water, coconut water, in it still. I don't want it to be too dry because it's for dumplings and dumplings have a tendency to be a little dry so and then my pumpkin is going to add a little more water so I'm going to let it dry a little more you see the stems almost disappear in pot right you could cook it this way this is this is perfectly fine it's basically done cooking right I mean let the pumpkin cook a little longer but this I'm um, what I'm saying is this you could use it at this consistency or you could actually let it cook down some more you could crush it a little bit if you wanted to 
you know take the back of your spoon and pass it through anything you want to do it's up to you this is your lunch your food for your family your family okay my dumplings are ready so I'm gonna strain them now and then I'm going to plate my my dish and you would see how delicious my food looks and this is my bad cheek or oh, my callaloo bush wow this is so effing pretty it's pretty it's pretty yeah can be a little annoying sometimes but that's okay I'm in my home and I just love being a little annoying sometimes okay folks so you see the pumpkin is cooked properly you can actually mash the pumpkins up with your spoon see that it's cooked see that nice so my pot is almost to where I want it to be. I need it to dry a little more. So, um, I didn't add any salt because I wanted my pip pickle to boil a little more in the bush. So I didn't add any salt to it. So, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to give it a little taste. And then I'm going to add... Instead of salt, I'm going to add some all purpose. The all purpose is to give it a little extra flavor. Okay? Alright, here we go. Alright. Um, if I cook it this way, it's good enough for me. But for the kids, I don't want them going and taking salt and sprinkling salt over their food. So I'm going to add a little bit of all-purpose just to hike up the salt and to hike up the flavor. So I'm going to use a little, about half a teaspoon of my Maggi season up all-purpose. You can use any flavor of it. You can use the chicken flavor, anything you wish to use. So. This is what I'm going to use to give it a little hike in the salt and a little extra flavor. Right, that's my all purpose there. I'm going to give it a little turn to incorporate the all purpose into the pot and not having it in one place. Alright, let it cook a little more. Give it a taste. Yes, that's where that's where we need to be with salt flavor. Wow. Can we to start eating? Right. Seeing the steam, my dumplings. I just took them off the stove and I strained them. Let them drain off whatever excess water they have in them. You can give them a little toggle. You know, that's a help to drain off whatever water. And then I'll plate my lunch. And boy, it would be real good. Yes, I'm using my hand to take up my dumplings. My hand, which is very clean, by the way. No, oh, it's hot. Alright, I'll use a fork. Let's clean the ass. That's what you call it, clean the ass. Right. So, because I am on a diet, I'm going to have four dumplings. It's 
See that? That's the finished product. And I love Kalulush. So, you see there? Pigtail, pigtail. I love me some Kalulush. Right, so this is what it looks like. This is what you call Baji and dumpling with pigtail. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. Um, if you like this video, you can share and you can subscribe. Bye. Bye.